Namaste. Circle inversion is a really interesting topic that we can create a beautiful animation using the Desmos graphing calculator. So I'd like to show you how we can show a dynamic interactive version of circle inversion using Desmos. We can draw a circle very easily by defining the distance from the center. R equals 1 means that we are a constant distance of 1 away from the center of the coordinate system. But if we define the center as A, then we can say R equals A. And so this gives us a dynamic circle. This circle will be our inversion circle. It will be the circle through which we invert the other circle we're going to create. So let's say B is the radius of the other circle. <clears throat> and it's nice to change the ranges here. You can just click on either of these numbers and we can say 0 to 5 and the range will be now 0 to 5 so it doesn't go negative. Good to do that with the other radius as well. So <clears throat> drawing another circle with a radius b can be done using coordinates. So if I do a 1 comma 2, this will give me a coordinate that's 1 over and 2 up. So it's 1 over and 2 up. But we can also say b cosine of an angle. B times cosine of an angle and B times sine of an angle. So this point now is distance B from the center at an angle of pi. Here's a beautiful thing we can do with Desmos. We can create a list of angles by defining the first term in this list, the second term, and then the last term. Now we can put A here, and it'll make a whole bunch of points at all these different angles. Now these angles don't make much sense. Better to start with zero, do tau divided by 10, which is tau is 2 pi, it would represent a complete turn, dot, 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 and then tau, a complete turn. These are now equally spaced. In fact, 100 would be even nicer. Let's change the size of these circles so it looks a little nicer. Now we can also add a center. Uh, let's say 3 is the center in the x-coordinate and 2 is the center in the y-coordinate. So now we have a circle over there made of these points. We're going to be reusing this uh, function right here. So this is basically one function and another function and these are what you could call parametric equations. So let's define the x function, x being the x-coordinate as a function of t, as this. And the y-coordinate, y of t, as a function of this. 
is defined as this. Now, these lines that are being drawn aren't really relevant, but those would be uh, graphs of these functions. But we want to represent these functions in parametric form, not in this more traditional form, y is a function of x. So here we have these two, and we can rewrite this as x of t, y of t. Now, what's actually interesting that's happening here is t, it, it assumes these are parametric equations. Hmm. Well, we could do it this way. Um, I prefer not to use t um, because we're going to show it as dots. But we can do it as a line as well. You see, this is actually a line right now because we've defined a parametric equation between an angle of 0 and 3. Notice if I make this tau, it'll be a full circle right there. But watch what happens if I put an x here. x is the independent variable instead of t. It doesn't assume that this is parametric. And actually, you know what? We didn't even need to do that. Because if I put an a here, it doesn't assume it's parametric either. I'd rather not use an x there. It's a little bit uh, confusing because x is really a function of a different variable, not itself. Or even a lowercase x is a little confusing. And y as a function of lowercase x is also confusing. So best is to use t. So here we have a whole bunch of dots. And we can turn on the coordinates uh, we get a lot of coordinates right there, but we can actually make the size quite a bit smaller. It's interesting to look. It's a little too small, but we can, we can manage the size so it's um, visible. And uh, perhaps we don't need the coordinates. So... <clears throat> Next, let's define these dynamically. So let's call this x center. Now to do subscript, I push shift minus x center. This defines an entirely new variable. And then y center. Now, an interesting thing we can do is control the values of these by making a coordinate, a point, now we have a point here and we can actually move the circle and as you see on the side, the sliders are moving as well. It's a nice feature. Now we have a very dynamic circle that changes based on the radius b and the two centers. And we can change those with this point here. So let's see. Next. Circle inversion is about taking a location, say that's uh, two of these radii away and moving it to 1 divided by 2 radii. So each of these points is a distance from the center, from this center right here, each of these points. And if we know that distance, we move it to a new radii that's 1 divided by that distance. But think of that distance not as an absolute distance, but rather as a number of radii. So when we change the radius of the blue circle, we will change the number of radii that any of these particular points are 
from the origin. So how do we find the distance? We can use the Pythagorean theorem. So distance is a function of x. Maybe we use t again. So we can do the square root. So the Pythagorean theorem is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Something good to learn to perceive directly. But for now, we'll just go based on the memorization of that formula. Not ideal, but it's a different exercise to sit and learn to apprehend that abstract truth directly. Then when we apply it in an equation, we can apply it more dynamically and in a way that helps us merge with its truth more completely. But if a squared plus b squared equals c squared, if we square root both sides, we have the square root of a squared plus b squared equals c, which is a hypotenuse. And the hypotenuse would be the distance from the center. So if we think of a right triangle where this is one of the sides and this is the other side, that would be A and B. C would be this diagonal right here. So um, A squared plus B squared. Now A and B are the X and Y coordinates, which we have defined right here. So X T squared and Y of T squared. So this is the distance. This will tell us the distance at any angle in the circle. So the next thing we want to do is determine how many of these radii we are. So the distance divided by A, the radius, as defined up here at the top, will <clears throat> tell us the number of radii. So that's the number of radii. But really, we want to find, we want to take each of these points and move it to 1 divided by that. So let's say that the radius is, say this point right here is, uh, let's put it at 1. So let's say one of these points over here is, is two radii away. So that point is two radii. How do we convert that into one half? Well, we can do that by taking two divided by two and then divided by two again. So this would be two. Because it would be the distance divided by the radius, so it would be two radii, and we want to divide by this twice. So really we're going to square this whole thing. And it's going to be one divided by that squared. Instead of saying one divided by, we can actually just take the reciprocal here. So this is one divided by something is the same thing as flipping the top and the bottom of the fraction. So this will tell us what we might call the transition function. So here's the transition function that will take, will tell us what the new radius is for each value. So this tells us the distance, this will tell us the new radius. Now notice that this depends on this, which depends on these, which depends on the angle. So, we should be able to draw a circle Well, we need to multiply the x-coordinate and the y-coordinate by this transition function. So, x will become smaller or bigger, transformed, and y will be transformed. So our new points should be just like our old points up here. Or uh, let's see, where are they? Let's bring this down. So these, 
we multiply them by the tran transformation or transition function, look at that interesting graph. And there we have our transformed graph. So let's see if this works. If I, if I move this, that should move. Notice how they intersect on the, the line of the blue. If I change the blue radius, that should move as well. There it is. And so we have done it. Let's uh, look at some of the properties of this, though. So if I put the green circle inside, notice that the pink circle goes outside. And we can even add more points if we like. So here's 100, but maybe we can make it 200. Now we have 200 points. Isn't that beautiful? Perhaps I can use a Lissajous curve to move this around. So instead of our x center and y center being defined by that point, let's use a Lissajous curve. Lissajous curve wobbles this around in a, in a nice pattern. I think I'm going to do two times the radius times the sine of six times a time variable. Let's do, uh, we're going to define time as a mega, or w. Let's do cosine. We'll make this sine. And if we make it 7, it makes a beautiful pattern. Let's see. We have to define w, though. We have w go from 0 to tau, which is 2 pi, and have it <clears throat> go continuously in one direction. Let's slow it down a bit. And there you have it, circle inversion. Hmm. So let's just feel our hearts and feel present with the way we've structured our mind through this mental exercise. What you focus on, you become. The elegance, the order, the sophistication in these structures are the structures that our mind take through its creation. So you can watch this again and meditate upon it and go into silence more easily because the order that this created for you helps you transcend the confusion and the noise of the human experience as it is on earth today. I'll share the code for this. Let's save it. I can share this by clicking here, and here is the link to it, so you can look at it yourself. Namaste, everybody.